All right, we're back. This is Structure of Ionic Solids. All right, again, no homework, so that's exciting. So we're talking about ionic solids, and what we're going to really do is kind of spend some time reviewing how to write Lewis symbols. So just a quick, 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 quick background. Remember our Lewis symbols? We um, show valence electrons with dots, right? We represent our valence electrons with dots. And remember finding our valence electrons is pretty easy, right? We go across the groups like group one, hydrogen's family, right? It has one valence electron. Group one has one, group two has two. Then we kind of skip the uh, uh, transition metals because they do some interesting stuff, right? Then we jump to group 13, right? They have three, 14, 4, 15, 5, 16, 6, 17, 7, and 18 have 8, with the exception of helium, right? Helium only has 2, but still they have a full valence shell. So what we got going there is we just are drawing Lewis symbols. So we look at K, we see K, it's in group 1, right? Family 1, so we're going to say K, and it's got one dot, okay? We're going to add chlorine to that. So we put chlorine in there. We'll make chlorine blue. All right, we look at chlorine, it's in group 17. So it has seven dots around it. All right. And if we remember yesterday's notes, we said that in an ionic bond, the electrons are completely transferred. So, because they both want full valence shells. So K is going to give up that one electron that it has to Cl. So we've got K over here. Now, since it lost one, it was neutral, it lost an electron, it becomes positive. And then we have Cl over here, right, with its seven. And then it took that one from K. So now it's negative one, and that's that attraction. The positive and the negative are the attraction, and that's how we would draw a Lewis symbol. All right, pretty simple, okay? Then this next question says, use Lewis symbols to predict the formula for a compound that forms between calcium and chlorine. So let's do the same thing. We look at calcium, it's in group two. So calcium has two valence electrons, right? Then we go to fluorine, right? All right, we got fluorine. It's in group, excuse me, chlorine. I lied, chlorine, but it's still the same group, right? So we've got, it's got seven valence electrons. So how is this gonna fit up? Chlorine only technically needs one, so maybe I need two, right, chlorines to make up four. So if we go CA here, it's given up both of them, so it's plus two, right? And then if we look over here, we have chlorine, this chlorine, right, and this chlorine here, they would probably be attracted on the other side, but we're getting the gist. So these electrons have been spread out. So our formula then would be CaCl2, right? Pretty simple, based on valence shells. All right, the other part of this is lattice energy. Lattice energy is the amount of energy it takes to break um, the structure of an ionic solid. All right, so we're talking about the structure of an ionic solid. And the reason we do that is because most of our ionic bonds tend to form solids because they are so strongly attracted to each other, and that's due to the fact that they have these lattices or lattices, right? So here we have a couple of pictures of some lattices, right? We have an ionic lattice. Notice how we have the green. This is probably our metal, right? That's our metal. And the little blues are our non-metal. And notice how they form, like they kind of fit right there together. And they form this positive negative just back and forth, creating a very strong bond. And it's also very structured. All right, our ionic bonds tend to be um, geometric shapes, perfect geometric shapes. We're not getting into the different types of shapes that they have, but they all are perfect geometric shapes. When you look at salt under a microscope, it's like repeating geometric shapes. It looks perfect. When you look sugar under a micro microscope, it's all jaggedy and amorphous. It doesn't really have a shape. 
All right, we can also see that right here in our picture of NaCl, we've got the same thing going on. Little Na's are kind of fitting in between the CL's, so there's a really strong attraction. And that really strong attraction results in very high boiling points and melting points, like NaCl melts at like 800 degrees Celsius. Okay, hope that helps. See you next time.